Hello friends! If you watched my last video, then you may remember this wooden tray that I found in my grandmother's things. Um, I'm gonna get started working on this project today, but I wanted to let you know how I was going to start this. I want to keep what she started here and use it in the piece that I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with tracing paper, um, copy the image so that I can paint over the whole thing, and um, put it back on after I put another base coat on. So, here we go. All right, now that I've transferred the design um, onto a piece of transfer paper, I wanna show what you guys saw. I wanna show you what I did off camera and you're not gonna be able to see everything. But what I've done is I painted the entire tray with this lamppost shade, it's called. It's like a matte dark gray. Um, and then I went ahead and painted the outside of this with a very glossy permanent black. And um, this was actually kind of an accident. I didn't plan this. That's kind of why I wanted to throw this portion in because a lot of times, for me at least, when I'm creating something, um, I don't necessarily have a plan. You know, I have an inspiration or a motivation and then things just happen as it's going. And what I meant to do was put black right in the crease of these two areas. You know, I put in this dark shiny black in the cracks um, I don't know what I was going for. I was just kind of testing it, but it turned out to look like glue had leaked, like these little ridges were glued on and the glue was seeping out. So I went ahead and filled the whole thing and I loved it. Um, the first time I put the coat on, it was, the texture was terrible, really bad brush strokes. Um, I let it dry, sanded it down, put another coat and then went over it with a um, foam brush to get this kind of glossy look that is a little rock and roll if you ask me. It kind of reminds me of a vinyl though. Anyway, then with my piece of transfer paper and some carbon paper and the, my grandmother's image, the portrait that I've chosen, I'll, I'll give more um, pictures and reference, you know, show the reference photo, but here's the transfer piece. And then I placed them both on here, and in this light you can't see because I can barely even see, but it's laid out and ready to go. And that's what I've done off camera and where I am so far. And now I am going to start outlining the traced lines, you know, the, the layout lines that I have in paint to kind of, um, because it's really hard for me to work because I can barely see it. So I'm going to throw some paint on to kind of outline it and give me an idea of where everything is. So compositionally, I can make sure it's okay. And then I'll start putting color in there. ready to go. I'm going to take basic titanium white and an ivory and soft black the basics. The colors that I have chosen are, let's see, cadmium red medium hue, real red, violet, another violet. They're both called violet but they don't look anything alike. And True teal, and this, I could not get the cap open, but I'm gonna give it a shot because this permanent deep green looks great. So, um, so far I'm going to start with a purple, red, and green kind of a theme. Um, let's see where that goes, and then I'm sure I'll add on from there, but that's where I'm at now.
hope you enjoyed the time lapse of this painting. Um, I am finished with the portrait and the flowers, and now I'm on to the next phase of my project, which I ran to Ace today, hardware store, and got some satin polyurethane to coat it to protect it. Um, new brush, and that was gonna be the last step. I did go back after the time lapse and add another coat of the matte background color to kind of sharpen up the edges a little bit. And I have not yet, but was going to put one more um, glossy coat around the outside, which you can kind of tell I'm like, just because when I was working on this painting, I drip, dripped paint a couple times. I dropped my brush like four times. So there's like a little, a couple marks. So I'm just gonna clean it up and put this couple of coats on this to protect it. But literally right before I started taping this, I decided I wanted to add some gold. So I have gold leaf metallic powder that you can add to uh, really anything, any kind of clear thing <laughs> that you want, but I can add it to this. And I'm going to um, put it on the outside ring and then this inside ring as part of the frame. So, uh, I guess we'll see how that goes together because this wasn't planned. None of this is planned. I mentioned that earlier, I think. Um, it all just kind of happens <laughs> as I'm working. And right now, it just so happens that I want to try this gold leaf powder, so. Okay, I've got the first coat of the gold leaf on the outside ring, um, which you can see, I don't know if you can tell from there, it's pretty grainy because it's only one coat, um, but I am loving it. You can already see the magic here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry a little bit so I don't touch it and get it all over the place. Do the next ring, follow that up again, that process, however many times, it, <laughs> however many coats it takes to get a nice solid gold and go on from there. All right, I'm completely finished with the piece. It took almost two weeks to complete. Um, I think down to just a day shy of two whole weeks. There were a lot of up and downs in this process. Um, you saw the gold leafing. I ended up adding three coats to both of the rings and a little bit on the back, which you'll see in a second. And um, the satin finish for one that I got from Ace uh, that I had talked about, to put on the center. I put on the whole piece and I ended up hating it. I was really disappointed in how it turned out. And um, to be honest, that was due to my own impatience because Ace Hardware is a little store and they didn't have a big variety of paint and satin was the lowest sheen I could find. Um, I mean, even in the spray paint satin, I, I didn't really find any true matte uh, protective finishes. So I went with the satin did the whole thing, very disappointed. There was no real contrast between the like framing element and the actual picture. So I went back over the entire background only with the matte lamp post shade and I left the portrait and the flowers with the satin finish and you can, I mean, it, you can't, it's hard to describe. You can see a little bit, you can tell that it's still shiny here and not there, but it. I am in love with it, the way this turned out. So my impatience and just testing and trying it has turned <laughs> turned it into something better than I actually imagined in my opinion. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out, but it took a long time because I had to do a lot of coats and I did a few coats, uh, covered this up with a few coats, had to fix this and the gold leaf, since it was powder, actually got onto this part. So I had to do another coat of the black on the outside, but now it's, it's completely done. Um, it's even ready to hang. So it's ready to, to mount whenever, and it here says Secret Garden, which is what I've named the piece. And um, I called it Secret Garden because to me, this piece isn't about a sugar skull or Halloween, even though it's 
predominantly in the color black and it is the month of October, this isn't really a Halloween piece. To me, this is more of an exploration of femininity. And this secret garden is like the hidden beauty and strengths inside the depth of a true connection, I guess, like really getting down to the center of a person and really getting to know them. Um, that's kind of what this piece is about. All my pieces in a way about um, connection. Anyway, I don't know if any of that made any sense. It's kind of hard for me to articulate how I feel about my own art because um, to me, the nature of the painting develops over time. It, it comes gradually. Even after I've finished a piece, I will sit with it for a few days or, or hang it, I mean, and passing or other people talking about it, I'll see things in it later that I didn't even realize were there. Um, obviously, I don't mean like I painted a panda in the background and didn't see it for three days. I mean, within the context of color or the way I've done a line or um, sm smudged in the background or something, I feel that I, I, I receive a message in a way from my pieces uh, later. Um, so here, I don't know. So it's hard for me to say exactly what I'm feeling about this because as I spend more time with it, the concept develops even more. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you for following along on the process of Secret Garden. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment and please like this video if you want to see more things like this and subscribe to my channel for other art studio artist type content. Thank you.